Ah, yes, I accidentally went over 10 minutes. And I feel that it was best for me to cut off there. So let us continue. I'll just rewrite the definition, the, the um, theorem. Or a definition, yes, an equivalent definition. Is, let's see, it's oh, bent a little. So, okay, definition. It's continuous at the point x naught. If for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that whenever d of x comma x naught, <coughs> when d of less than delta and x in the set of a, yes, or actually let's say x set of m, and let's say we have two metric spaces, with one with D as the, the metric, the other one with N and rho as the metric, then whenever this is less than delta and X is as in the set of M, for any epsilon greater than zero, distance between F of X and F of X naught is less than epsilon. Very important! This is true. If it's continuous, then this is true for any point x naught in uh, n. <coughs> well, I mean, in, in m, in m, any. Well, this, this is yes. You say function f is continuous on the domain m. Absolutely. So many equivalent definitions. For example. A is closed. Let's say all till A is closed. Oh, it's closed. Well, let's say open first. All is open. Then the preimage F inverse O is open. We're in M. So o is open. All is in N. So in other words, the pre-image of every open set is open. <coughs> now, remember this. With the O, op with the, uh, when we talk about the pre-image, pre-image does not mean inverse in the usual sense. Pre-image, F inverse of A. Well, not yet inverse. F with the preimage of A is equal to the set. X in the set of M, where X, where F of X is in A. So in other words, don't need to care about subjectiveness, one-to-one, -one, all that. No. Just need to fulfill this. Likewise. If O is closed, these are equivalent definitions to continuity, then the inverse, that not inverse, the preimage is, ah, oh, you're messing that up. The preimage is also closed. So, it's continuous. It's equivalent to saying that every, the preimage of every open set in N is open. And the same thing, the preimage of every closed set in N is closed in M. <laughs> now remember this. Just because the function, just because the function, just because we have a closed set in the preimage, does not imply that in the image it's also closed. If something is closed in the preimage, it does not imply that the, that the function that the image of that is also closed. So in other words, the converse isn't true. Was that right? Yeah, that's it. Is. Actually, no, no, no. That, this is not exactly the converse, but you, you get the idea. So in other words, not necessarily 
true that if A is subset M, A closed, F of A closed, not true. Same thing of open. In fact, it's easier to say. It's easier to show an open example, for example. Let's say, for example, for example, when f is not one to one, let's say it takes an open set. Let's make it open. And it's gonna take this guy to a single point. It can still be continuous. This, this closed set, the pre-image could actually be, for example, the pre-image could also could be contain this below. Let's call it dot x. So yes, it could be true that this guy, the pre-image of it is closed, but this fellow, the, this is not the pre-image of it. But this is an open set. When you map it with f, it's going to map to the point x. Let's define f to map to the point x. So that's a perfect example. Not necessarily true if you look at it the other way. So, talked about continuousness. Very important things that come out of continuousness. So, for example, theorem. F continuous M compact then F of M is also compact well let's say not M let's say K is a subset of M yeah let's make it better then so, the image of every compact set is also compact. Also, same thing for connected sets. And of course, if you know it's true for a connected set, well, actually, this implies. Same is also true, and you can see it can be derived from the other. A path connected. This is because connected implies path connected. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's stop again, really quick.